Hi everyone, in this video we will talk about gastroenteritis or the stomach flu. So gastroenteritis is an infection of the bowel that causes diarrhea with or without vomiting that is non-bilious or cramping abdominal pain. So the most important thing is diarrhea with or without vomiting, non-bilious vomiting, and cramping abdominal pain. Gastroenteritis can be spread either by contact with an infected person or through contaminated food, water, or surfaces. Gastroenteritis is very common in young children and it is uh, mainly caused by viruses such as the rotavirus and the norovirus which can easily be picked up from other people who may have immunity but pass on the infection. Immunization against the rotavirus is available for babies at 2, 4 and 6 months of age. So it's divided into three doses. Uh, gastroenteritis can also be caused by bacteria, which is usually on contaminated food and often spread by flies. So moving on to the symptoms of gastroenteritis. The first one is diarrhea, and the most important one. It's usually frequent, loose, watery, greenish motions. It usually lasts for two to three days, but may last for 10 days. Vomiting, uh, usually early on, and settles in a day or two. Abdominal pain, uh, which is colicky in nature. Crying, maybe due to pain, hunger, thirst, or nausea. And bleeding, which is uncommon, but sometimes seen in motions. Fever could also be present, and anal soreness, due to the diarrhea. So what are the problems? The serious problems here are loss of water or dehydration, loss of minerals such as sodium chloride and potassium, and the danger is greater in very young children. So now for the assessment of gastroenteritis. The first thing we should think about is the diagnosis of gastroenteritis correct? We should consider the important differential diagnoses of UTI, appendicitis, other infections, and surgical causes of acute abdomen. We should also consider the diagnosis carefully if there is abdominal pain and isolated vomiting. So when we get a case of gastroenteritis, there are some red flags that might make us consider other diagnoses such as severe abdominal pain or abdominal signs persistent diarrhea of more than 10 days, blood in stool, very unwell appearance, bilious or green vomit, and vomiting without diarrhea. As for investigations, in most children with gastroenteritis, no investigations are required. Fecal samples may be collected for bacterial culture if the child has significant associated abdominal pain or blood in the feces, as a bacterial cause is more likely here. However, these results usually don't alter treatment, and extensive testing for viral and bacterial causes is expensive and usually does not influence treatment. We can consider stool microbiology if the diarrhea has not improved by day 7, particularly if the child has recently been abroad, 
uh, or if we suspect septicemia or if there is blood and or mucus in the stool, particularly if protracted or the child is systemically unwell, if the child is immunocompromised. So these are the cases where we order stool microbiology. As for blood tests, such as electrolytes and glucose, they are not necessary in simple gastroenteritis, but are required for children with severe dehydration, renal disease or diuretic use, altered conscious state, doughy skin suggesting hypernatremia, home therapy with excessive hypertonic or excessive hypotonic solutions, profuse or prolonged losses, and ileostomy. So now for the acute management of gastroenteritis, we can give ondansetron, but it's not recommended for children less than six months old or less than eight kilograms in weight, and it should only be administered once in this setting. And the doses are as follows, eight to 15 kilogram babies, we give them two milligram wafer dose, 15 to 30 kilograms, we give them four milligram wafer dose, and above 30 kilograms, an eight milligram wafer dose. Antidiarrheals are not recommended. And now for the oral rehydration, remember that lemonade, homemade oral rehydration solutions and sports drinks are not appropriate fluids. We should also stop any feed fortification, encourage parents to find methods to help children drink, such as using a carp syringe, or aim we're aiming here for small amounts of fluid more often. Uh, breastfeeding should be continued. We can suggest a oral rehydration solutions for parents. They can get them from any drugstore, such as gastrolyte, hydrolyte, and pedialyte. Early feeding, as soon as rehydrated, decreases stool output and aids gastrointestinal tract recovery. So we should encourage early feeding. And recommend usual diet once hydrated. If diarrhea worsens in setting of formula feeding, consider the temporary two-week use of a lactose-free formula. So in cases of mild or no dehydration, the child can be discharged without a trial of fluids after appropriate advice and follow-up arranged. Nasogastric rehydration can be given to children with moderate dehydration. And it can be divided into rapid nasogastric rehydration, which is about 25 ml per kg per hour for four hours, or slower a nasogastric rehydration, which is approximately 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour. So the slower nasogastric rehydration is preferred in infants less than six months old, in children with comorbidities, and in children with significant abdominal pain. If patients continue to have significant vomiting, meaning two large vomits in an hour, or significant abdominal pain during nasogastric rehydration, then we should re-examine to exclude differential diagnoses, including the development of ileus. If we're still satisfied with the diagnosis of gastroenteritis, then the solution is to halve the rate of nasogastric uh, fluids. If the vomiting continues despite this, or if profuse diarrhea is present, then we consider slowing the rate of nasogastric rehydration, or we can consider IV fluids. 
So as for IV rehydration, uh, we treat shock with 20 ml per kg, 0.9% normal saline as boluses and we repeat until the shock is corrected. Uh, and we also measure blood glucose and treat hypoglycemia with 5 ml per kg of 10% glucose. I previously discussed IV fluids in details in a video that I will link below. So that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. Thank you very much.